Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the grand final of Magnus Carlsen Chess Tour final. So finally we have two best players of all this series, all this uh, series of the tournaments. And uh, Magnus Carlsen, who's gonna play in this game as white and Hikaru Nakamura, who's gonna play as black. This is the only decisive game of the first day of the final. So um, this is why of obviously I, I choose this game to show. And uh, Magnus Carlsen and for those who don't know, I think everybody knows who watched this video, he is a triple a world champion, triple world champion, that means in the standard time control, rapid time control, like 15 minutes, and blitz time control as well. However, interesting that Hikaru Nakamura has a legendary ranking in blitz um, time control because 2,900, that's that's just insane. Uh, but he didn't win the blitz um, world champion title, so uh, Magnus Carlsen is better on that field. And uh, about the preparation for this game, Magnus Carlsen was completely exhausted uh, after the uh, the matches with Ding Gliren. He couldn't even answer most of the questions. He was, you know, uh, very, very tired. So uh, he had a one day of rest. However, Hikaru Nakamura uh, seems to go very easy through uh, Daniel Dubov. He won 3-0. So pretty convenient um, situation for Hikaru Nakamura. And from what I seen on, on his online stream, uh, Hikaru Nakamura played last time in the 5D chess. It's maybe too much to say he played, but he tried to understand. He went through tutorials, but uh, okay, everybody can understand the 2D chess. We everybody plays 2D chess. Then we have 3D chess when you have another dimension uh, and you play in the cube. And then you have 4D chess where you can have, you know, uh, 4D the dimension. So all these cubes you have, you know, um, expanded even further. And then 5D chess, that means you can, uh, you know, um, check the king in the past. And then there is a time dimension added and it's completely mind blowing and... Uh, uh, very difficult to, to understand. I'm not even sure if all of this concept is, is, is correct. However, um, this is how he, um, you know, enjoy chess now in, uh, and try to uh, prepare against Magnus Carlsen. So that looks pretty funny. I'm not sure if it's part of trolling or, or, or not. But it, it was, you know, just, just insane to watch Hikaru, uh, who is in the final and, you know, has the, the most important games against world champion. And he plays 5D chess because why not? Okay, without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. Um, Magnus Carlsen as white opens with D4. We have knight F6, C4 uh, and now E6. Knight F3, we have D5, so king's gambit declined. And now knight C3. And here we have have uh, d takes on c4 so it's kind of queen's gambit accepted but it's still declined it's vienna variation uh, and now we have e4 uh, grabbing the center and here bishop b4 is the main idea uh, main move main line however hikaru nakamura went for b5 um, this is quite a sideline the idea of course is to uh, protect c4 which can be protected but of course the pawn is hanging uh, but it cannot be taken because this pawn is hanging so that's uh, pretty tricky uh, so this is why e5 is played here so um, the center is slightly weakened now white have to wait for d5 and uh, have to prepare that uh, we have knight d5 and now finally knight b5 knight b6 now defending c4 so uh, this is the idea and now this pawn doesn't look so great uh, however there is some uh, good thing about that the rook can come uh, for example to the semi open b file and operate from them from the b file and now the main line of this opening goes like bishop e2, knight c6, and after castle, bishop e7. Very, very harmonious way. Bishop e3, castle, and the game can continue. White, of course, gonna go after this pawn, uh, and black gonna try to, uh, to to defend that. And there are a couple of ways to do that. Uh, however, Magnus prepares first by a3, and it's quite a novelty. It wasn't at least played on the, on the top level. The problem with that move is uh, it actually weakens the b3 square. Uh, which maybe is not important now, however, it can be in the future. Uh, we have knight c6 with the plan of uh, extra defending the pawn on, on c4. 
and now bishop e3 in the spirit of that opening knight e5 and now queen c2 uh, and here we have a6 kicking the knight so uh, knight have to do something knight c3 and now bishop e7 preparing to castle or maybe not uh, magnus goes to the center and now preparing to to d5 uh, and now bishop b7 controlling uh, d5 even further uh, bishop e2 preparing to the castle and now queen d7 and hikaru said okay i'm gonna castle also but guess where and magnus carlsen said okay i'm not gonna guess where h4 if you dare you can castle on them on the king side uh, so h5 h6 is probably coming but also the rook can you know be lifted and attack g7 so castling on the king side can be quite risky probably hikaru would have to prepare it first by f5 and if it's not taken by an en passant then after castle he can go for the castle on the king side as well uh but he said okay i don't have different plan if you attack me on the king side i'm gonna attack on the queen side so bishop c6 and now rook h3 as planned rook b8 so hikaru tries to get as much as possible from his position now his rook is um, on the open file on the semi-open file and the rook can be more active over there uh, we have rook g3 as planned and now you know g7 pawn is under attack what to do um, the engine recommends something like g6 however it's gonna weaken the position now uh, keep in mind that uh, white can try to play h5 attack this pawn uh, the knight can jump to g5 exchange for the bishop otherwise uh, it can be sacrificed on f7 because this pawn gonna attack on g6 and together with the rook and the queen it can be pretty uh pretty nasty attack uh so g6 was not played by hikaru nakamura he went for the attack on the queen side bishop a4 uh skewering the queen and now saying okay this knight on c3 hold all of your queen side so uh how about you just exchange that and uh, magnus carlsen doesn't have much choice uh he plays knight on a4 queen a4 asking to exchange the queens and now magnus could go for queen a4 and after knight a4 rook c1 and going after this pawn this pawn is attacked twice so for example knight b2 uh and then rook g7 and the position is pretty complicated uh but it's playable for both of the sides however magnus goes for rook to c1 uh asking to exchange the queens on the on the c2 which uh hikaru doesn't agree knight b3 now attacking the the rook and here magnus actually uh could go for rook d1 and it's pretty good move now black has to decide you know go back with the with the knight maybe here maybe here uh try to attack the position maybe this way uh maybe g6 defend g g7 still uh all the possibilities are on the board however uh magnus didn't go for that he went for rook g7 so he literally sacrificed the exchange and um, hikaru said okay so let's do it uh we have a knight on c1 and now the queen is attacked so uh he has to take with the queen we have queen c1 and now c3 uh and of course magnus cannot take with the pawn because um, his pawn on a3 would be hanging so we have queen c3 and now knight d5 coming with tempo so queen c1 still defending the the b2 uh, and now we have knight e3 and f takes on e3 as the queen still has to keep an eye on b2 we have king f8 kicking the rook and now rook g4 moving the rook to the to the fourth rank uh on the same rank with the with the queen however the queen is gonna move so queen b3 and attacking and the pawn and it cannot be defended so um we have queen c7 getting this pawn uh queen b2 and this is the critical moment of the game where magnus carlsen can get a very very nice advantage his position is already very active but he has to find one more final move which uh, you know gonna make his game easier so uh if you want to enjoy that trying to find the the, the best move in the chess uh feel free to do that while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so the move we are looking for is actually d5 uh, and the point is that d6 is coming and if black takes the pawn then another pawn can be pushed and now this is extremely dangerous already 
uh, and moves like f6 doesn't really work uh, because there is rook g7, very very nice tactic. Uh, so the bishop is is attacked twice, and if black tries to defend that, that doesn't work uh, because there is rook f7, king g8, and I hope you see that already that the rook is unprotected as the queen moved to a3. But we're not gonna take the rook, but rather play queen g3, and that's actually a checkmate. So um, this way is not possible. King g7 is pretty much forced. And after queen e7, king h6, knight gonna jump to d4. And this is just unstoppable. Um, this is this is very strong attack on the king. And, um, and yeah, that's winning. So after d5, e takes on d5 doesn't work. What black would have to find is bishop a3, allowing this d6. But for now, black actually can exchange the queens. So uh, white would probably play king f2 uh, and then queen b7 and after queen a5 attacking the the bishop uh bishop shouldn't retreat to a7 because of this of this d6 but rather bishop b4 with the attack on the on the queen and now after queen a4 uh, e takes on d5 but it's still much better for white so white can you know continue um the attack uh, rook on f4 is on the board, uh, knight can jump, join the attack also over there, so all of this, uh, also e6 can be pushed together with the rook, uh, very very active and uh, that, that would be the best what uh, white can do. So Magnus should play d5 immediately, uh, however he wanted to prepare that move, so king f2 first, so there are no tricks with exchanging the queens, however uh, Hikaru now retreat with the queen to b7 we have queen a8 and now rook g8 so all of this is too slow now it's you know the rook is under attack so rook have to be moved rook f4 uh, and now queen c6 still keeping an eye um, on d5 and here again magnus still has to find the fight the plan the pawn he can attack the pawn exchange the queen uh that's one of the options or he can even go for d5 which is not as attractive as before however it's still you know quite interesting for example after queen d5 exchange the queens and then play e6 rook g7 defense but now we have knight e5 with the attack on the pawn uh let's say rook b7 knight f7 uh king can move otherwise we're gonna have some uh, some some discoveries with the attack on the rook um but now we have bishop h5 which is also pretty nasty black can play rook b2 king f1 and the position is is extremely crazy extremely complicated uh black probably would want to take with the bishop on a3 first otherwise if they go for the for the rook on g2 look at this knight e5 king is under attack so king d8 and now knight c6 and the uh, bishop cannot be defended so after king c7 knight e7 rook h2 let's say king g1 uh it's completely insane you know how to continue the game probably black can draw that game however it's still you know uh, very very rich in possibilities this pawn is very advanced um two minor pieces for the rook it's pretty interesting you know how that would end it so still d5 maybe is not attractive like like before however it's still very playable and leads to very complicated game however magnus went for queen d2 and um, the idea is to bring them the queen to d3 and attack them the undefended pawn so we have h3 also defending g5 so any knight uh, g5 is not possible so queen d3 going after the pawn on h6 however it can be defended pretty easily rook g7 uh, and here magnus didn't find uh, any other plans so he just uh, want to exchange these pawns so we have queen a6 queen a6 bishop a6 rook b2 with check uh, bishop goes back to e2 and now finally bishop a3 uh, and now how to continue the game Magnus goes for for g4 the most active move we have bishop e7 now preventing any g5 breakthrough uh, and now rook e4 pretty much the the waiting move d5 still could be played that would be uh quite an idea to bring the rook to the game maybe um to the queen side uh, however Magnus goes for the waiting move rook e4 uh, and now Hikaru goes for rook g8 so he wants to bring the rook to the uh, to the queen side 
Uh, Magnus go back to rook f4 and now king g7 and for a very short moment the king blocks the, the rook on g5 so uh, we have g5 by Magnus Carlsen, h takes on g5, knight takes on g5, bishop takes on g5 and here is another critical moment of the game it's still you know pretty playable however what white have to play is rook g4 uh, going after the bishop this way and after king h6 just exchange everything and try to defend that game it's maybe not easy however maybe magnus carlsen could manage that this is the best continuation for magnus he could play however he want to save the rook and he played h takes on g5 but this actually led hikaru nakamura um, to find the winning continuation so feel free to pause the video and find the the way how to beat magnus carlsen in this position while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So the move we are looking for, the only winning move in the position is rook h8. And this is a very simple tactic. Now, rook h2 is coming and winning the bishop is the way. And of course, you cannot defend the position with rook g2. This simply doesn't work because you're gonna lose the bishop as well. So it doesn't really work. Magnus found king f3, uh, but still we have rook h3, king g4. Now the rook is under attack, uh, but the rook can take the pawn, undefended pawn on e3. And also another pawn on d4 is impossible to, to, to defend. Uh, for now, Magnus saved the bishop, so bishop f3, and now simply rook d2 going up after the pawn uh, and Magnus doesn't have really um, any moves here so we have king h4 rook e takes on d3 so very simple um, you know win the win that pawn and Magnus um, tries d5 we have e takes on d5 and now rook f6 bluffing that okay I'm gonna move one of the pawns as my rook is defended Hikaru says, I don't believe you, rook e3, I'm going after your e5 pawn, what are you gonna do? <laughs> and Magnus said, okay, I was bluffing uh, rook f5. We have rook d4 with check and now the king has to move somewhere. We have king h5 with the idea maybe to support the march of this pawn. However, there are another problems because now the king is completely stuck. So for example, the rook can go this way. Uh, and checkmate but this is quite slow and Hikaru found even better move rook b4 rook b4 and Magnus Carlsen is in completely Zugzwang now uh, the pawn is undefended but it cannot be taken because of the checkmate so that's the problem with the king on h5 um, and also if moving to let's say g2 uh, protecting h3 then simply rook g3 attacking the bishop bishop f1 and now the checkmate gonna come on h4 so that's also not possible and finally if rook f6 now then simply rook e5 taking the pawn and after rook d6 rook f5 going after the bishop bishop g4 and now the checkmate is coming anyway so uh, Magnus cannot you know move any of the pieces king is completely locked over there so he played e6 we have f takes on e6 winning yet another pawn and now rook f6 trying to deliver some checks uh, we have rook to e5 now by uh, Hikaru Nakamura and now rook g6 so if the king moves somewhere there then maybe the pawn can um, can go to the promotion so we have king f7 rook f6 king e7 king h6 and now rook b8 by hikaru nakamura so uh, he just bring the rook to the defense and now rook f4 by magnus carlsen he tries to go with the with the with the rook behind the pawn however uh, Hikaru said, okay, where are you going, my friend? Uh, if you move your rook, I'm gonna take your bishop. So uh, exchanging the rooks is actually forced. Rook f8, king f8. Now we have g7, king g8, uh, g7. And after rook e1, Magnus Carlsen resign because rook gonna come to g1 and the pawn gonna be taken. All of them, all of these squares are uh, dark squares. So the bishop cannot do anything about that. If bishop h h5 may be trying some tricks it they, they not gonna work simply rook h1 
and the bishop is pinned, pawn is blocked, so the king has to be moved, uh, king g6, rook h5, and of course, this is winning for black. This is why after rook e1, Magnus Carlsen resigned. So this is only one decisive game, and I would like to show you what happened in order. So as you see, uh, the game number two ended with the win of Hikaru Nakamura. We had also three draws, so first day... Uh, goes to Hikaru Nakamura, one point, first match is won, and just reminder, we play two, three matches uh, won. And, uh, and yeah, that's all for today, hope you enjoy it, and if you like this video, press like, if for some reason you don't like it, press unlike, and if you don't want to miss another games from the Super Final, press subscribe, smash the bell button, thanks for watching, and see you in the next one!